Right, hello again. I uh, here to do a quick install and demonstration of how you would actually go about the process of getting everything up and working for uh, Rep SM for ArcSight ESM or uh, Express. <coughs> There's a lot of discussion around uh, the the time and the efforts uh, required for setting up threat intelligence and uh, making sure that you've got the various uh, systems up and ready and you've got to create a little content and so on. Uh, I actually want to dispel a few of those uh, illusions around that. Um, so first off, I'm actually going to install the RepSM uh, package. Uh, this is what comes for ESM and for Express. Uh, I'm actually going to do the uh, version 1.5 uh, and we just locate the package, we just import it, uh, press open. That's then going to prep the install process, read the XML file to make sure that it's correct. It's going to tell me what I'm going to install. I'm going to click next uh, and then it's going to go away and collate the relevant number of objects that are there, the resource IDs, and then import them accordingly. So it really doesn't take very long at all. Uh, it's just going to make sure that there's no resource conflicts uh, and make sure that all the data is going in correctly and that it's being set uh, and organized. So the RepSM package isn't just uh, uh, some filters, it's actually significantly more than that. There's a whole bunch of reports, uh, dashboards, uh, there are some filters, uh, there's a bunch of use cases as well, which I'll, which I'll touch on in a second uh, with regards to the functionality that's built in. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of active lists that are actually being created and set up now. Uh, and then we're going to update all the relevant fields and some global variables to make reporting easier. There's a whole bunch load of stuff in there as part of that setup. Uh, it should be noted as well that this package is ready to go. Uh, I have a connector waiting, ready to uh, to actually feed in the data, uh, but it is actually a very, very simple process to, to do the setup for that. Uh, so that's all packaged ready to go that's all imported and set so now if I look down at my solutions uh, I can now see that I have uh, my reputation security monitor rep SM version 1.5 uh, all the content underneath there like I say there is a considerable amount in here it's not just uh, a couple of lists and go from there it's actually significantly more than that so what else do I need to do for setting this up and making it work well actually I need to make sure that my rules are in place uh, and that they're set. So if I go to my real-time rules, uh, I'll see that uh, I don't actually have the rules deployed for that. So I go to my Arc Site Solutions. I'll see my group there for Reputation Security Monitor. I right mouse click uh, and then I deploy those rules. And that's it. I actually don't need to do anything else with regards to the setup. Uh, in fact, actually, if you go to the use cases directly, you'll actually see under the solutions, under the reputation security monitor, there are a bunch of, of actual active uh, of uh, these use cases set and ready in, to configure. So it actually, if you just select on any one of those and just right mouse click, you normally have this option of uh, configure use case uh, if it needs some additional configuration. And none of these require any additional configuration. They are ready to run. No additional configuration needed. Uh, what I do need to do is I need to make sure that uh, my um, uh, I've got some list data that's that's been pulled in from the service itself that that's been provided from the HP security labs so at the moment I haven't actually got that uh, I will actually just set that going in a second and make sure that we can uh, get some data in there but the important thing is if I look at some of this data here so for example one of the use cases here is internally infected assets so if you've defined your network model and you've defined that that where you've defined some internal assets, you've defined them within the internal network zone, i.e. they're not external, then that use case will automatically work. Like I say, there's no configuration needed. If I just open that use case, it brings up the resource library for that uh, and shows me everything that's re relevant to it. I can see dashboards, I can see some channels, there's some reports against that. It actually will do all of that automatically, no additional configuration, uh, and I can just click on that. So. It's making use of the configuration that you already had by knowing what's going on. So the point there, this particular use case is focusing on, and as you can see up here, it's, it's actually documented and detailed that if your IP address, so one of your IP addresses of one of your internal hosts, uh, 
typically we're talking about a DMZ or, or, or something like that where it's a public facing service uh, where we're getting log data about that. If that appears in a reputation list somehow then you want to know about it because for some reason somebody somewhere is considering it to be a threat. So like I say no additional configuration required as part of that, that process of setup. So assuming that we have our model import connector set and running, which I actually have in this in this particular setup, and it is actually running, so that's okay. Uh, I should actually now have some data uh, being pushed into the system from the, the, the threat system itself from the uh, HP Security Labs uh, research service. So the simple and easiest way to check on that is actually just go to the lists. Uh, I can see there's a couple of lists here under the uh, Reputation Security Monitor, one for domains, one for IP addresses. If I just have a quick look at one of those, so show the entries to that. Um, as with normal lists, uh, it only shows, uh, in fact, this at the moment, I'm only showing partial data at the moment because it's still being updated. But we can see there's a whole bunch load of IP address information in there. Uh, we can see that there's some, some data coming in. Uh, the great thing about the RepSM service is it does actually not just give uh, the IP address, but it also gives uh, the exploit type, so the information around it. So in this case, there's a lot of this is spam. There will be other uh, sources of data in there and a score, a, a, a risk scored it scored against it as well it goes from 0 to 100 so this is actually pretty low uh, and that's that's okay that's perfectly acceptable anything over certain thresholds will increase that accordingly so we can see some data is going in uh, so well, that's great now we've we've got actually got an incredible way into understanding what's going on uh, and seeing the data accordingly what I can do is I can just quickly go to my dashboards uh, and have a look at the dashboards with regards to this. So I can go to my solutions, I can go to Rec reputation security monitor, uh, I can go to my health status uh, and actually just have a quick look onto this one. So uh, let's look at my uh, resource health. Uh, so I literally just double click it, open it up. So there we go, we can see uh, some the data's coming in and it's working correctly and I don't actually have any rule errors as part of this. The important thing is, is that the rules are set to run automatically and, and automatically populating everything. So there's no additional setup that I need to go through to configure this particular uh, system to use the reputation data it's coming in. So I've actually just jumped forward a few minutes there, as you can see by some additional messages that has been received here, just to let the final bit of data flush itself into the system uh, to make sure that it's uh, it's got all the relevant data in there with regards to the reputation and threat information. So um, just to give a final finish off to what we've got here, uh, just to show that we've got some information in here, I'm just going to jump to active channels. There's an active channel here for uh, just generic what we regard as malicious communications. I can just open up that uh, active channel and see what's going on. Now I have been feeding some events through my system uh, and I know that I'm, I, I've got a load of firewall and network and, and NetFlow data in there as well and I want to actually see what's going on. And hey presto, here we go. There's some data that we can actually see. We can see some of this, uh, some outbound malicious uh, activity to different IPs and domains. Uh, and now, of course, I can start the investigation process. However, I'm going to talk more about uh, what we can get out of uh, RepSM and what it's going to give me as information. What I wanted to do in this uh, very simple video was just to give an example of how easy it is to install, how easy it is to get the data into there, and how easy uh, the configuration steps are required. In fact, there are no configuration steps required. The data's in there and it's automatically taken into use and we're starting to see some, in, some things that we never knew before. And that's the really useful thing at this point. Anyway. That's enough for me for the moment. Thank you very much.